and shut that down and we're finally on to the browser itself so as you can see it was uh, well assuming it builds okay which uh, I expect it to it's um, wasn't too onerous a task to get to where we are to build this and you can see Falcon itself is quite a small package so let's start by extracting the package uh, sorry remove it first from the home directory and we've got this command here it says unless you install both Pi side 2 and K18, KI18N remove the translation, sorry I haven't got either of them let's just remove them fix missing include in the current version of QT and now we can build it, let's see if there's any extra options no uh, build testing equals off alright oh, okay so it's just to turn off the testing I'm not going to do that I want to test it so let's um, build and make this uh, one thing we'll do is just do a LD config in case that's needed editing files in the right directory is not permitted because I did the wrong E that's better so let's paste this in and begin the compile I don't think this takes too long Okay, so that has built. Let's run the tests. 
Uh, make a test. Yep. All passed. So now we can do sudo minus a make install. And that's it. So in theory, we've now got a browser, so we can start it off and test it just by typing Falcon. Press enter. And what will happen now is the cursor has got this window attached to it because it wants to bring a new window up. So let me just get rid of our other browser. So I just place it anywhere in the middle, left click it, and there we go. We've got a... Uh, at last we've got a GUI browser which we can use, so we can type in Linux from scratch, for example. And it looks like default search engine is DuckDuckGo, nothing wrong with that. Let's select the web page, BLFS, read online, latest book, and there we have it. So we can carry on now in the GUI in a GUI browser um, without any need to have this floating browser overlaying the screen to demonstrate what I'm, I'm doing or where I'm reading in the book or even to have a second text browser like we've got here where I've been copying and pasting commands from so it makes things a whole lot easier in these commands here um, so yeah, that that's as far as I wanted to go for this video. It's it's a critical point really because, as I said, it makes things so much easier. We can, you know, load up um, packages and just uh, you know, I'll be doing what I normally do. Uh, for example, if we go to one we've already done, like Cracklib, centre click it, brings it up in a tab, and we're just going through. Oh, what's the optional ones and just bringing up the new ones in the tabs, optional, optional, I haven't done that one. And it's a good way of processing all the dependencies. So Valgrin's the last one in the list, what does that need? It needs bind, bind, etc. So for example, I haven't done those ones, then we look at the last one in the list again. And you keep on going until you come to a point where the current tab is the package that you, is the, is the first package to build, basically you haven't got that you need to be build, built. So it's quite a good way of um, uh, managing the dependencies where having to write them down you can keep them open um, assuming I don't know if Falcon actually retains look at there's no menu either is there it looks of it oh there it is there um, I don't know if it retains the tabs when you shut it down or not let's find out well, let's try the preferences first of all oh, it kind of looks like Firefox actually uh, general after launch restore session so it does so that's even better because that means that if I quit end the session for today and start falcon off then yes it's remembered the tabs that are open before so that's really useful so uh, yeah next time what I plan on doing is going through all the packages that I need to rebuild with all their dependencies so because I've got so many, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do all that in one go, but I'll certainly do my best. Um, and then I'll start moving on to some of the desktop managers and window managers, um, which makes a bit more of a nicer environment than TWM. I mean, don't get me wrong, TWM is fine. It's, it's usable. Um, it's just a very basic and obviously with uh, other you know, high level desktop managers like, um, sorry, window managers like, um, well, in fact, the desktop and window managers almost, uh, GNOME and um, KDE, they're just nicer to use. Um, many more options and some useful additional functionality that you won't get with a basic one. Having said that, there's things like LXDE, which are perfectly good, lightweight um, desktop managers. So, um, yeah, I'll be moving on to them afterwards. But uh, thank you very much for watching this video and uh, look forward to uh, 
doing the next one having watched that and if you enjoyed this please click a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to hear about any of my future videos in this series or any other series that I do. Thanks very much. Goodbye.